The Polk Audio Magnify Mini AX is exactly what it says on the tin. It's an absolutely tiny soundbar apart from the fact it has a pretty chunky subwoofer paired with it. Now this 3.1 channel soundbar can be found at the time of filming and in the UK at £390, while in the US it will cost you $450. In this review you can see how it compares to some of its rivals and of course if it's actually worth its price tag. So to kick off this video, we do have to talk about its design, and indeed it has got a tiny form factor. The only thing worth considering of the main soundbar unit is that it is a little bit taller in comparison to some of its competitors. So therefore you'll want to size it up and make sure that it doesn't actually take any of the lower portion of your screen away. As for the subwoofer, it is a lot larger, and it's actually quite laughable because it's almost three to four, if not five times the size of the main soundbar unit. As for the aesthetics of both, I've got no complaints whatsoever, but I do appreciate this is somewhat subjective. Now for you to interact with the soundbar, you've got some physical controls at the top of it, which are certainly appreciated. And of course you have got a wireless remote. This allows you to adjust certain settings from a fly from the comfort of your sofa. Equally, you have also got the ability to see what you're adjusting because there's a small little display found at the front of the soundbar, making it very handy to know what you've changed or indeed just to understand the metadata that's being fed through it. So moving swiftly on, let's talk about connectivity. And here it's somewhat of a double-edged sword, at least depending on your own setup and your TV. Let me explain. First off, in terms of your wireless transmissions, it's great to see that you have got AirPlay 2 support, Chromecast, and also Spotify Connect, allowing you a higher audio fidelity over a wireless transmission. You have also got Bluetooth to fall back on, although it's limited to the SPC and AAC codecs only. Now, when it comes to its wired connections, this is where I have a problem. See, to connect over to your television, you've got optical for more legacy devices and HDMI where the ARC and eARC standards are supported, therefore allowing you uncompressed Dolby Atmos data to be fed through. However, it is worth considering that when it comes to its inputs, you've only got an auxiliary 3.5 millimeter jack and no HDMI inputs. Now this is an actual major drawback for someone like myself. See, my television is from 2018-2019 and it didn't natively support Dolby Atmos. As a result, when I do my soundbar test, it often means that I'm feeding through Dolby Atmos data from my 4K Blu-ray player straight into the soundbar rather than the television. Now, in this respect, if you're someone like myself, you're really not gonna get the most out of the soundbar. And indeed means it's limited connectivity. In other words, the fact that it doesn't have an HDMI input is a certain worthwhile consideration. Now, if you do have a modern television that has Dolby Atmos or DTSX support as such, then you won't have to worry because the signal is gonna be fed through to your television, which then is gonna be fed through the eARC standard straight to the soundbar, and then is going to give you the Dolby Atmos or DTSX effect, therefore allowing you to have that better heightened metadata. All worthwhile considerations and indeed is one of the limitations of this soundbar given its compact form factor. Now with all that in mind, let's get on to a brief sound demo. I'll be playing back an audio track which is from Priya J titled Like Me, then going on to a piece to camera whereby I'll be presenting the Seatmo 125 electric moped on Totally EV. Make sure you check out the annotations on your screen to understand how the soundbar is operating. The automaker, which is part of the Volkswagen Group, has come up with the Mo 125, a fully electric moped, which at the time of filming and in the UK can be found between 5,000 to 5,800 pounds. Now in this review, you can see if it's actually worth its price tag and
vehicles. It is worth considering that you've got a two-year warranty on the bike itself, or four years on the battery pack, or 25,000 miles, whichever comes first. Now to kick things off, I would like to point out that the Mo 125 a rebadged Silent S01. Indeed, Seat, the automaker, has effectively used the specialities of Silence, the bike manufacturer, in order to bring out its own e-mobility solution. Now, moving past the audio demos, which I appreciate are not going to be ideal using my microphones, I would like to talk about its driver configuration. And here you've got two tweeters, three mid-range drivers, and the subwoofer, tallying up to a 3.1 channel configuration. Unfortunately, the manufacturer has not shared any sort of wattage claims. Now, when it came to the overall sound frequency range, I actually found myself pleasantly surprised, although it really did depend as to which mode I used. While listening to music, I ended up gravitating towards the music preset. However, while listening to movies, I found myself going for the 3D mode. Although it's worth noting that the 3D mode does add a little bit of an odd reverb, which I'll touch upon very shortly. Now, breaking it down in terms of the sound frequency range, the sub bass tones actually do a pretty good job. And that's namely due to the fact that you've got that dedicated subwoofer, which has a 10 inch downward firing driver, and therefore actually does give you a pretty good low end grunt. As for the mid bass, it's actually controlled and precise as well. Therefore, I didn't feel that it was over bloated, nor did it actually leak into the mids. Now, as for the mids, they are pretty good, specifically if you add one or two notches on the voice adjust setting. Although you won't want to go past this because it does take away from the overall accuracy. And in this respect, I just felt that having those couple of extra notches added a little bit of vocal boost without taking away too much of the overall sound reproduction. Of course, over here, if you leave it at its default EQ, which is zero, then you might actually feel that the voice sounds a little bit too recessed and pushed back. Now, as for the highs, they do an okay job, but unfortunately do feel a little bit rolled off at the top end and don't give you that sort of toe tapping feeling in comparison to larger soundbars out there at this price point. Now, this does actually perfectly bring me onto its soundstage. Now, before getting onto that, I will actually give you a audio demo, and this is with Transformers Age of Extinctions. As I did mention before in this review, I did not have access to Dolby Atmos because my television does not support it. So therefore, everything you will be experiencing is over Dolby Digital, and my comments will be reflecting upon that. Now hopefully that little movie demo gave you a bit of a taster as to how the soundbar performs with Dolby Digital content. Now as I did mention before, I was not able to utilize Dolby Atmos nor DTSX, so therefore I can't comment about the heightened metadata. However, I can still talk about the soundstage due to Dolby Digital and PCM and comparing it with some other soundbars out there on market. And in a nutshell, I was left disappointed by the Polk Audio soundbar. Indeed, in this respect, the soundstage just felt a little bit lackluster, specifically when it came to its instrument separation. As for the overall width and depth, it felt a bit too unidirectional. 
Now granted, you can open it up a little bit by the use of the 3D mode that you can select via the remote control, but even then, it just takes away from the overall accuracy. So you might get a little bit of that room filling sound, but then have a little bit of odd nuance and a bit of an odd reverb in comparison to using, let's say, the movie or music presets. Now I would also like to note that you can also add surround speakers, for example the Polk SR2s, but I did not have that on review so I can't comment about that either. This will turn the system into a 5.1 channel soundbar in comparison to a 3.1 channel which it currently offers. Now ultimately, when it comes to my verdict, I can't see myself recommending the Polk Audio Magnify Mini AX, purely because I don't really see the point in it. You're getting a very tiny soundbar, which might be appreciated for certain setups, but a pretty chunky subwoofer. And don't get me wrong, I really do appreciate that extra low-end prowess thanks to the subwoofer, but then the overall system just doesn't make sense, at least not in my opinion. Equally, if you look at its price point and compare it to some of the alternatives out there on the market, some of the rivals offer a far better audio reproduction, specifically when it comes to the overall soundstage. Now, as a result, my suggestions will be down in the description below, and I'd be curious to know what you make of it down in the comments section below. Now, if you've liked this independent detail review and want to see more from myself and the channel, definitely do consider dropping a like, subscribing, and hitting that bell notification. All of which are certainly appreciated and allows me to continue delivering honest reviews like this one. As such, I've been totally dubbed and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.